Hey guys, today we are back with episode number 19 of Truck History. On this episode, we are walking you through the history of the extremely rare, highly requested truck brand, Marmon Trucks. But before we begin, if you've enjoyed our videos this far and you'd like to help us continue to create more content, please consider joining our Patreon community by visiting patreon.com slash show. Those of you who become patrons will be treated to a video VIP pass with exclusive early access to all new episodes of our brand new Trucking Culture series, including the Convoy content we have coming, as well as receive free decals, t-shirts, and truck posters. Interested in becoming part of our Patreon? Please visit the patreon.com slash show link in the description box below. And remember, folks... If your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. The earliest roots of Marmon Motor Company began in 1851 with an American car manufacturer called Marmon Motor Car Company. Created during the automotive boom, brothers Howard and Walter Marmon originally established the company in Indianapolis, Indiana, approximately an hour away from your very own Jack's Chrome. Throughout the early 1900s, Marmon Motor Car began producing reputable, reliable, speedy, upscale cars. In 1904, they came out with the Model A Marmon Touring Car with a V4 engine. Two years later in 1906, they patented double three-point suspension with their Model C and Model D cars. Later in 1908, the Model 32 would come along and quickly become one of the most notable Marmon vehicles to date. Three years later, Marmon engineer and former race car driver Ray Haroon would make the fan favorite Model 32 famous when he led the legendary Wasp to victory and won the first ever Indianapolis 500 in 1911. The Wasp was the first automobile to use a single-seater monoposto design and is now on display at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum. Moving forward to 1913, Marmon would attempt to further capitalize on the success of their Model 32 by introducing the much more costly Marmon 48. Marmon's Model 48 was loosely designed after the Wasp, but unfortunately was a huge flop. Luckily, Marmon redeemed themselves when they later released the lightweight Model 34, which had an aluminum engine block and was far more successful. Fast forward a few years to 1927, when the shorter wheel-based Little Marmon was unveiled and became an immediate success. The Roosevelt came along two years later in 1929 and was the world's first eight-cylinder car with a price tag of under $1,000. Unfortunately, with the Roosevelt's lower price tag, the company had to build much higher quantities in order to turn a profit. And when the stock market crashed in 1929, it only furthered Marmon's sales issues. When the Great Depression hit, it drastically reduced the luxury car market, but Marmon didn't go down without a fight. In 1931, despite decreased demand, Marmon returned to its roots of luxury car making and released the V16 Marmon 16. The 16 was awarded with a number of design and engineering accolades, and fewer of 400 of these rare beauties were built. However, regardless of its renowned reputation, the nearly $5,000 price tag presented a tough sell during perhaps the most drastic economic downturn to date. In order to keep business going, Marmon Motor Car joined forces with Colonel Arthur Harrington, an ex-military engineer involved in the design of all-wheel drive vehicles. Together, this team created a new company in late 1931 called Marmon Harrington Company. The company was off to a successful start as they procured contracts with the U.S. military for T-1 aircraft refueling trucks and a variety of other heavy-duty vehicles. In 1932, Marmon Harrington built the first all-wheel drive truck and trailer combination, as well as the largest truck ever built at the time, for oil pipe construction in Iraq. 
construction of all-wheel drive vehicles and conversion of existing vehicles to all-wheel drive quickly became the company's trademark. Additionally, the company designed the Marmon Harrington armored car in 1938, which was used by the British and Commonwealth armies in the North Africa campaign. During World War II, the U.S. Ordnance Department was given the task of developing a purpose-built airborne light tank to replace the Tetrarch light tank being used at the time. The Ordnance Department in turn requested designs from three American companies including General Motors, J. Walter Christie, and Marmon Harrington. In May of 1941, the Marmon Harrington tank design was chosen and later designated the M-22. The end of the war in 1945 dramatically decreased the need for military vehicles, and Marmon Harrington sought new business alternatives. The company found just that in 1946 when they released their first electric trolley bus, which quickly became the best-selling trolley coach of the post-war era. Between the years of 1946 and 1959, the Marmon Harrington Company produced over 1,600 of these trolleys, However, by the late 1950s, the market for trolleybuses in the U.S. had dried up and the company's last order for transit vehicles was delivered in late 1959. As the company's trolley chapter closed, a truck chapter opened in the early 1960s. When the Pritzker family bought the company and soon the focus on full vehicle manufacturing ended. In 1963, a new company called Marmon Motor Company of Denton, Texas purchased and revived the truck portion of the Marmon brand. However, when Marmon sold their over-the-road trucks, they only licensed the Marmon name for trucks sold in the U.S., which in turn greatly impacted the company's sales and resulted in no more than four Marmon trucks engineered for overseas. Marmon then entered into an era of absence which left many wondering, whatever happened to Marmon? That was up until all of the company's assets were resold yet again to Space Corporation and operations were moved to Garland, Texas. After getting off to a rather slow start, several years later in 1973, Marmon introduced a new approach with new cabover and conventional models under their new management. Both configurations came equipped with 90-degree tilting technologies, with the cab over debuting a 90 degree tilt cab with no disconnecting components, and the conventional having a 90 degree tilt hood that housed a huge 1200 square inch radiator. These Marmon rigs were rare breeds indeed, with each model custom made to the customer's exact specifications. With that being said, these Marmon models also offered the most complete standard components available at the time including a classic Cummins engine, Rockwell axles, and a fancy factory-installed CB radio. The company kept rolling out their cult classic cab over and conventionals throughout the duration of the 70s decade, until another big year for Marmon would occur later in 1981, with the restyling of their rugged cab over engine model. These Marmons were made in two main series, F for fleet owners and P for premium or owner operators, the latter launching with a much more lavish look and lots of luxurious options, including interior improvements and striking, more stylish paint schemes. Additionally, the cabovers came in three length configurations, including 60 inch day cabs, 86 inch single sleepers, and 110 inch double sleepers, which also indicated the model's numeric nameplate, such as the 110P. Continuing down the same channel as their cab over counterparts, the company's conventional cabs also came in the same two FMP series selections, with perhaps the most popular model being the prized 57P. However, sleeper cabs were available on all cab over configurations, but was an option that could only be picked on premium conventional cabs. With that being said, these premium semis sported a slew of sleeper box options, including both single and double bunks, as well as walkthrough and crawlthrough configurations. A little later on, as the era of aero trucks continued to advance and evolve into the end of the 80s and the early 90s, Marmon launched a new model line with their lightweight, 
Class 857L, adapted as the company's affordable, aerodynamically advanced option. The 57L increased profitability by introducing improved payloads with its lowered weight and littler engine. Unfortunately, despite the 57L's debut, annual sales began to fluctuate and drop as the 90s neared. This decrease in sales was largely due to a soft market and a small dealer network that disallowed Marmon's expansion. By 1995, cabover engine trucks had fallen out of favor due to the change in length restrictions around this time, and Marmon's conventional models comprised the bulk of their production and sales. However, Marmon sales continued to suffer moving forward as their custom conventionals simply couldn't keep up with mass manufacturers like Peterbilt, Kenworth, and Freightliner, who were making major moves at the time. In hopes to keep the business afloat, International Harvester stepped in to lease two of the three assembly lines operating at Marmon's Garland Manufacturing Plant. Unfortunately, this leasing agreement with International was not enough to keep the business going. Finally, in 1997, Space Corporation made the decision to lease out the last remaining Marmon assembly line and close their doors completely. In February of 1997, the last Marmon truck ever, a Marmon conventional model, rolled off the assembly line. Marmon trucks were low production, handmade trucks that were sometimes referred to as the Rolls Royce of trucks. Although these rare beauties are few and far between nowadays, many of the originals can still be found in service and out on the road today, earning their keep. That brings you up to date with the history of Marmon trucks. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We have finally reached our goal of 20k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. Next stop, 50k. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune into our live podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time, and join Maddie and Dave as they answer viewers' questions and discuss all things Chrome. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, please follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We still have our truck history shirts available on our website at jackschromeshow.com, so please be sure to check them out. Save stacks on stacks at jackschromeshop.com with the all-new Roadworks exhaust kits for Peterbilt and Kenworth trucks. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next week, and remember guys, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Mm -hmm.